How could you not come to Tom Crutchfield's and see his iguanas? I tell you what, by the looks of it, this guy's expanded since the last time I was here last year. Greens, yellows, reds, blues. I can't wait to see them all. The green iguana. I mean, an absolutely gorgeous animal in its own right. Such a beautiful creature. I mean, they're, they're a herbivorous creature by nature, which means they like to eat vegetable matter. Strong, powerful animals, long tails, and believe it or not, just like the Australian water dragon, if these guys break their tail, it'll regenerate just like this guy has right here. That's pretty cool. Now, just to think, all the iguanas that used to come into America were wild caught at one stage and then started being captive bred here. That's an awesome success right there. But then starting and manipulating and breeding coloured animals, <laughs> that in its own right is absolutely amazing. And I tell you what, here at Tom's, you guys are going to be absolutely blown away with some of the coloured animals he's producing. What a spectacular little albino iguana. I mean, that in its own right is absolutely magnificent. The albino in the iguanas is exactly the same as every other species. It's a straight recessive trait, meaning you need one albino to produce hets. Taking those hets together, putting them together, producing more albinos, one in four on average, and you produce something spectacular like this little guy. But believe it or not, through selective breeding, you know, Tom's done something even better. He's producing these guys here, the crimson albinos, and it's Tom's line in itself. And when you put these two next to each other, you can see the difference right there. It's absolutely spectacular to look at these two side by side. Both gorgeous little creatures, but I tell you what, they're crimson. Man, those colours just absolutely pop. One of the other cool facts about the crimson, or the Tom Crutchfield strain albinos and the normal albinos, is they're not compatible. In other words, when you put these two animals together, they will not produce albino offspring, as one would think. They actually produce plain looking animals. That's pretty cool. If you guys think these are pretty cool, let's have a look what the sub-adults look like and compare the colours as they grow. I mean, as a sub-adult, the albinos are absolutely spectacular. That is a gorgeous animal right there. I tell you what, I would love to have one of these guys, but when you compare it whoa, to the crimson, oh my god. Look out, you can see why it's calling it a crimson. That is nice. A nice crimson orange colour compared to the yellow of the albino. Spectacular animals. Some of the other colours Tom's working with, and it's believed that they're polygenic, which basically means oh, they're line bred. You need to pick the nicest coloured animals, and in this particular case, the blue animals. So picking the nicest, bluest animals and putting them back together, producing more and more of these blue, beautiful creatures. And not only the blue ones, but these beautiful red guys too. Oh, look at that. And I mean, there again with the red guys, they're picking the reddest of the red, putting them back to each other, producing more red animals. That's pretty damn cool. And when you compare these guys with the albino, there in a nutshell, you've got yourself a plethora of colours which you can use and mix through each other and put back through the albinos, expressing some really interesting colours in the future and patterns. Look at this beautiful critter, a caiman lizard. You can see why they call them caiman lizards. Got these big, chunky heads, large, scaly bodies. I mean, very much like a crocodile. But in the country these came from, there are caimans, not crocodiles, or even alligators. So they've got these little lump, these spines all over their body, large claws, very powerful claws. Man, these things are very powerful indeed. But man, look inside that thing's mouth. Can you see that? Look at those teeth. They're blunt teeth. This thing is just like an Australian blue tongue. It eats snails. And I tell you what, there's no way in the world I'm going to stick my hand anywhere near that sharp end there. That means business. Beautiful red coloured head with a green body. That thing is so gorgeous. Let's not upset him too much and put him back. I mean, Tom works with a lot of different types of iguanas, just like Roscoe here, a Cuban rock iguana. He's got his own little hotel in here. He's got a couple of extra little friends, a couple of little tortoises down here. That's pretty cool. But what I want to show you is down here. Come on. Look at these beautiful critters in here. It's a whole heap of iguanas. And as you can see, 
Sometimes I like people, sometimes I don't. But that's not what I want to show you. Still more. <laughs> Look at these guys in here. This is what I wanted to show you. It was the adult albino iguanas. Look at that stunning creature right there. It's a decent size albino lizard, and I tell you what, such a gorgeous creature. I would really like to have one of these. I hope you enjoyed this week's show about iguanas here at Tommy's place. Man, they're absolutely awesome creatures. Let me know in the comments below which was your favourite. For me, I think it was definitely the Crimson Albinos. Hit me up on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget Instagram. Until next time, thanks for watching Critter Cam.